Hi Astraddicts, in this video I want to show you how I shot a wide field image of a deep space object using my camera and telescope. A panorama image that truly deserves the title High Resolution. My name is Tim and this is Astraddict. If you want to shoot a very big target, let's say a nebula with a telescope, you might want to choose a smaller focal length or use the bigger one multiple times. By shooting maybe two or more nights, you can center different parts of the object and stitch these panels together in post-processing. The result will be a combination out of the benefits of a big focal length, a lot of detail, and the benefits of a short one, a wild field of view, and the entire object is in the image. That's the power of mosaic imaging. Let's start planning. The planning for all my images starts in Stellarium. Free to use and surprisingly accurate. Let's start. The first thing you need to set is the field of view feature. In the top right here you can see a symbol, the oculus tab, let's say. In there I usually I have set my sensor, I have two different types of cameras. I played around with the 60 Mark II, which I'm recording right now, and I have the ASI 294 here. I set all the I've set all the settings, resolution, height of the pixels, everything and telescopes. Now here I've set different telescopes, the ones I have, and from time to time I tend to try out different focal lengths and see if this scope would be good for me. And in my case it's the quadruple, 450mm focal length. Let's go to our target. We have the Elephant Trunk Nebula and let's do it night. Here it is, beautiful. Now you can click in the top right, we have the field of view feature symbol. The rectangle you see right now is the field of view if I would use the ASI-294 and a quintuplet. I've said this one earlier. I will need to swap... I will need to switch it out to, not the refractor, to the small refractor. You can see right here I can also rotate this. You can see right here this target is way too big for my focal length. I want to include the whole nebula, even the outer portions. And this would be impossible with this configuration. You might think. You can of course in Stellarium mark a star and press space to center the image. Now I can maybe plan out this mosaic. Let's say I want to do 4. The different panels of a mosaic need to overlap at least, let's say, 10%. If you do less, the registering will be very difficult, and if you do more, the result will be not that great. So let's say between 10 and 20% of overlap. You can see the orientation of the camera is at minus 90 almost, and this would be a good centering for the first panel. I would now make a screenshot of this, of this image right here, and put it in Photoshop, and then I will make I will move the rectangle exactly up here in a straight line. This would be the next great thing. Let's find a star close to this one. Or maybe let's keep it this way, we don't need a star. You can see the right ascension declination coordinates. Again, make a screenshot and do it four times. And the more precise you are in terms of alignment and straight shifting of this rectangle, the better the result will be. You can then take these four screenshots and blend them in Photoshop to see how good this selection actually was. There are tools that can do this way better. For example, in Pixinsight there is a script called the Mosaic Planner. I never tried to use it because you need, actually need an image for that. I don't know how that works. But with this tool, pretty easy to understand and it costs no money. If you are sure that your composition is correct, you can take the coordinates from the right ascension and declination and enter them into the software of your choice, into the imaging software. In my case I'm using Astrophotography tool, and there you can see the Objects tab and you can set custom objects. I enter the name, the date of the night, or the number of the panel, let's say, and I enter the ascension declination for each panel four times in four different nights. And since I'm using plate solving, I can center each star on one pixel precision, which is amazing. Now we have four different objects for four different nights and we can start the imaging. Basically it's like any other imaging night, except there's more. A few tips if you want to try a mosaic for the first time. Especially in the summer, take a full night for each panel. And even better, try to get the same number of subs for each panel. In my case I took 85 subs for each of the four panels, 
and sorted out the worst 5 of them to have 80 frames for each panel. This will help you to even out the noise over the entire image. In my first mosaic, the Heart Nebula, right back there, I had lots of good subs for the last panel, but much less for the first 3 ones. The result was a smooth bottom left corner and the rest of the image was noisier. Pretty annoying. Shoot your flat frames each night. It will help your illumination, vignetting and dust. And really do it each night, not just after all of the 4 nights. Keep your camera rotation fixed. In my case, when I start a mosaic project, I center the camera correctly in the first night and I will keep it that way until the project is done. If we have to disassemble and assemble the entire rig over and over again, even a slight different angle on the camera will have a dramatic impact and you will have to cut away lots of good subs on the final image. For post-processing, use a dedicated software like Pixinsight or Astro Pixel Processor. You can of course use Photoshop, but it will be a lot easier with the other two. My software of choice is Astro Pixel Processor. One of the features of this software is an amazingly powerful mosaic mode. Let's start. At first, let's set the working directory. I have the elephant trunk right here. You can see I did a lot of different runs on this image. The entire folder is 50 GB big. There are two different ways to create a mosaic in APP. One of them is easy to understand and very simple and the other one is easier but it could take a lot of time and many things could go wrong. So let's choose the easy one that works. We do not integrate all the images together. We integrate each panel on its own and then combine these four to one final image. You can see right here I called this integration without drizzle. I drizzled these images up in the first run, which I didn't do in the final image because it was no benefit at all, just more noise. And I think this one contains some of the images I need. Let's set everything correct. If you want to know how to integrate a single image, check out the video I did before that. I will not go over that right now, just over the mosaic processing in this video. Let's load the four integrations of the, I think, five different nights. I think it was modif modified, modified, modified and modified. These four. I don't need these settings right now. So these are four integrations from different nights, the four panels of the mosaic. You can see they are not edited very good yet. The only thing I did was I cropped the edges. Let's take a look at this image. You can see the noise is pretty well balanced out, I like it a lot. The detail on the nebula is definitely there, this is only a slight stretch. Ooh, way too bright. And you can see the garnet star almost has spikes. The collimation on the small refractor is definitely out. And a funny side note, I was panning around in this image looking at it with a friend and then we stumbled over this little thing right here. And I thought, what the hell is this? Turned out that this object is in the catalog of Stellarium, for example, but it's such a weird catalog name, it's such a, such a small target. I suppose th they say at least that it's a planetary nebula and I am amazed that this small thing was captured in this image. And if you pay attention to the final image, there is another one, almost like this, somewhere. Two, you can see this one is a little bit darker, that's why I will use the normal, the, what's it called again? The local normalization correction to get the illumination even. Again, one benefit of APP. Everything automatic. Let's again go to, no, over here. Next one. Here you can see finally the main part of this image. Ah, it looks so beautiful. And this uh, this is light 3, but this was actually the last night I shot. So this is in light, uh, night 4, and this here is night 3. You can see that the trunk is in both images, the overlap is pretty big, but the entire nebula is in the image, and that's what I wanted. And you can also see that this image looks much better than the other ones. But the collimation is off. Definitely annoying. Alright, let's do the settings to create a final mosaic image. We don't need to calibrate anything, since we haven't loaded any correction frames. 
these are already calibrated, it will analyze the stars. The first setting in the register mode, we can set the registration to mosaic. I know that it wants to use dynamic distortion correction and not the same camera and optics mode. But if you click integrate, it will tell you if some settings need to be changed. Normalization is good. And in the, in the integration, everything looks good. All these images have already been sorted out by rejection filters, so there are no hot pixels, no hot pixels left. All the images are clean. I don't need a rejection method. I will integrate average with no rejection. Diffraction protection does not work on these weird stars. And I will use a first degree local normalization correction. And the next setting, the multiband blending. Multiband blending is exceptionally useful in mosaics because if you stitch these images, you have a so-called seam. The overlap of the images will look different because they need to be integrated. So we will use a blend mode to get these seams away. You can experiment with this value. Anything between 10 and 20 will be good for mosaics. If you do normal integration, it won't be any benefit. I will not drizzle this up. And I think it will tell me that I will need to set one more setting. I see 13, 96 or 69, I forgot. <laughs> right here. The scale stop, where is it? I think it's registering. It's doing it right now. Stop, I didn't set it. Need to disable this annoying sound. The scale start and scale stop depends on the overlap you have, at least 10 on stop, and it will work fine. Let's set this again, yes. And do you want to increase the scale stop to at least 10? Yes. And now APP will do a final image, which is insane. Doing this in Pixinsight is a bit more of a task, because you need to register each frame manually to the others, and then you need to use a script. And even with the script, there are errors with bright stars close to the edges. That's why I liked, that's why I love to use APP actually. I did one, the Hard Nebula image in Pixinsight, it worked, but it was a lot of work and the processing took, the calculation alone took ages. So this shouldn't take too long. It loaded the frames, now it needs to get the local normalization correction right. And I will do one run again without the multiband blending to show you how it would look like. Let's see what it got for us. Analyzing for noise and dispersion, saving, and let's load this image. There it is. You can see these individual panels and we would have a seam so-called seam here, which we could see the overlap. With the multiband blending, this is not visible even if I stretch it to the max. Look at this. Amazing. Let's do another of these integrations, just real quick, without any normalization correction, without any of these but without the multiband blending. Let's try that again, just to show you how effective this tool actually is. Doing all of this in Photoshop would be a most annoying task. Forget the auto alignment feature or the auto panorama feature of Photoshop. This doesn't work for astro images, especially if you have distortion in these stars. Even Photoshop can use the stars as reference points. You will have to do it manually and you will have to blend it manually, which is Almost impossible. But with APP, just a few clicks and here we are. And here you can see the strength of the multiband blending. Let's increase the brightness. Let's actually increase the brightness. You can see that each panel shines through here. The noise between each panel is of course much better because it's now eight hours of exposure time in this small section here and four on each panel and actually 
Look at the noise. Look at the noise over here. It's 16 hours of exposure time in the center of this image. Without the multiband blending, this noise difference would be dramatically visible. And you can see the overlap. It's already there. With blending, automatic blending, just one click and this is done. That's the power of APP and it's amazing. Shooting a mosaic image can be a pretty boring task. Setting up and sitting outside for multiple nights without immediate result. But I promise you, if you see the first two panels stitched together, you cannot stop. This project was amazingly fun, even though I'm struggling with the collimation of the refractor. Most of these big nebula targets in the summer are a great choice for mosaic imaging. And I'm not done yet. I know you are craving to see the final image. And you know, whenever I reveal a big image at the end, I tend to keep it quiet and simple, without anything spectacular, like dramatic music or quotes from famous people.